I'm going to explain to you my form finding process for my grid shell model. So form finding in this case is finding the form of the structure by simulating the forces in the structure during its construction and the rest of its life. And the reason for that is to make um, the construction work and also so that the loading on the structure will work. My process in making this form finding model, I start with a guide curve, which is roughly the perimeter of my structure. And then I'm going to orient a grid to that guide curve. And the grid obviously is a grid that's going to form the structure later. And then to form the structure from the grid, I'm going to deform it simulating the forces that will be acting on it. Here you can see my grasshopper form finding definition and I'm going to run you through the steps of form finding and the first step is to set a perimeter guide curve and this curve is going to set a guide for the outside edge of the final structure. So it can be any curve really. I'm actually going to start with making a 30 foot by 30 foot box as a kind of guide for my size. And now I'll make the curve. Okay. Maybe a bit smaller. Okay, that looks good. I'm going to set this curve. Now the next part of the process is to find the angle of the grid in relation to this outline. The way I do that is I rotate curves around the centroid of this shape and then find the longest one and use that to orient the grid. So here's the curves that I'm rotating around this, the centroid and you can see there's quite a few of them. And now I'm going to find the longest one. So that's the longest one there and I'm going to use that curve to orient the grid. Here's the grid. You can see it's oriented 45 degrees in relation to that longest curve. And that's the going to be the best structural orientation. Now I'm going to start setting the simulation forces for the form finding. And the first thing I'm going to do is make these grid lines into stiff rods that resist bending. So first of all, I divide them up into their orientation so you can see curves are going opposite ways. And then I'm going to use this angle goal object to check the bending angle of each of these members. And the way it does that is it divides it into segments and then checks the angle of each segment against the angle of the next segment and it tries to minimize that angle difference. This part of the definition makes sure that each of these mesh sides stays the same length. And what this is essentially doing is pinning the members at the joints so that at each joint the relation of the cross members to the members going the other way won't change. To deform the grid, we have to apply loads to the intersection points. So what I'm doing here is applying a load to all the points inside this curve. So you can see that here. There's going to be a force upward on all these points where you can see the vectors. And here I'm applying load downward. So you can see these vectors are aimed down. And there's an offset from the outside of the guide curve 
The purpose of the offset is to give it a little more space to bend up. So if you can imagine looking at one of the members from the side, this is sort of how it would look. These vectors aren't pointing directly down, they're pointing to a point below the guide curve and the reason for that is they're pushing inward a bit and by pushing inward they'll push the mesh together and it'll make it have steeper sides which will make more efficient space use inside the finished grid shell. Now I'm finished setting up all the forces that are going to be acting on the grid and you can see I've plugged all these goal objects into the kangaroo solver so there's these angle components that keep the grid members stiff and then there's these length components that keep the length between the joints the same and then there's also the loading and now we're ready to run the simulation. So you can see how the grid is deforming. And actually it'll just keep going if I leave it. And the outside points, there's obviously more outside points so they're pulling it down and it'll just keep falling. So for our final form, we only want the part of the grid that's in the positive Z domain or above ground. So I've set it so that you can only see that part now. And when the grid is the right shape that we want, um, we're just going to have to manually stop the simulation. So I'll run that now. So you can see the outside of the grid is staying pretty close to that perimeter curve. And now I've stopped it and this is our shape.